second half of this worksheet deals with third roots. So here on my common squares and cubes paper, I need to be looking at the column marked cubes. In this case, 375, when I go to my column, it looks like the first thing I can try is 343, which is seven cubed. 343 doesn't go in evenly, so I try 216. 216 doesn't go in evenly, so I try 125. 125 does go in evenly. So it becomes three. When I divide 375 by 125, that means I can really break this down into 125 times three. This is the one that I do know the cube root of, because on my sheet, 125 pushes me over till five. So this comes out as a five. This is the part that remains under the root. When I go to do cube root of 72, I start by trying to divide 64 into it, doesn't work. Then I try and divide 27 into it, doesn't work. Then I try and divide eight into it, and it does work. It becomes the cube root of eight, the cube root of nine. Cube root of eight is a perfect cube. Two comes out, leaving behind the cube root of nine. Some students have issues when they see this cube root of nine. It's triggering to them because they think, I know that nine as a square root comes out as three, and they want it to work the same under a different numbered root. The reason nine can come out of a square root is because three times three is nine. Under a cube root, there is nothing times itself three times that would give me nine. Unlike eight, which is two times two times two. So I have to separate myself from that squares list when I start doing problems involving cubes. Number 12 is 686. So on my list, I can start at 512. It doesn't work. But when I go to do 343, it does work. It goes in twice. So this becomes the cube root of 343 times the cube root of 2. Again, I look to the left of the 343 in my paper and see that 7 is the cube root of 343 leaves behind a cube root of two. This final row is really like things that we've done before, where here we have a cube root with variables under it. We need to figure out how many whole numbers go in, and then what's the remainder. So I can write this as x to the 7 thirds. If I put that in my calculator, I'd see that 7 thirds is 2.33, which means it goes in two times as a whole number, or x to the 6 over 3. And that leaves me x to the 1 over 3. 6 over 3 reduces to 2, so this is x squared on the outside. I'm then left with, still under the cube root, that remainder of x to the first. When I go to do number 14, I need to look at two different variables. I have x to the 14 over 3. I also have y to the 11 over 3. With 14 over 3, 12 is the biggest number. That's a multiple of 3 that goes in and that leaves behind two. With 11 over three, nine is the biggest number that goes in, and that also leaves behind two. Sorry, these should have been y's, not x's. Now when I look at these things together, this x to the 12 divided by three becomes x to the fourth that came out of the root. This y to the nine divided by three becomes y to the third that came out of the root. I keep the same root number, a third root, and underneath that I put x to the second, y to the second. Number 15 again has a negative under here. It's reminding you that because this root is odd numbered, I'm allowed to have that negative. Really in this case, you can have the negative come out or the negative stay behind and mathematically they're exactly the same. I'm gonna bring the negative out, but again, it would be absolutely fine if you left it behind. So I'm gonna call this x to the negative 99 over 3 times x to the negative 2 over 3. I apologize. I didn't want those negatives there. Negative x to the 49 over 3 times x to the 2 over 3. Now, the reason I was able to do this is because I divided 101 by 3. It gave me 33.67. So I knew that 33 times is how many total it had to go in to come out evenly. That's why negative x to the 33rd comes out. Left behind is still a cube root of x to the second. And again, this is mathematically identical to x to the 33rd, the cube root of negative x to the second.
either of those ways of saying it is really saying the same thing.